Hi guys, just in case you missed it or you want to see more, I am making a video explaining how to do the momentum problems. This is the basic momentum stuff. This is um, learning goal 3.1.2, which is being able to use this equation. P equals M times V. Momentum equals mass times velocity. Okay? So, um, just remember that we are still always going to be using our problem-solving procedure. Um, and you will see why this is important in the next video, where we will be working with impulse, because um, it gets pretty complex pretty quick. Um, so practicing and getting used to the problem-solving procedure is going to make your life a lot easier. Without further ado, let's get into this. So, uh, number one, Rupert has 38.5 kilograms of mass and can run 11.3 meters per second. How much momentum does Rupert have? Okay, so I go through the question and I underline the important facts. And sometimes I will even label them here. So I know this is mass. This is velocity, and this is momentum. So that makes it easier whenever I do step number one of the problem solving procedure, which is to list out my given variables. Okay. So I'm going to list these out as they are presented in the problem. M, which means mass, is equal to 38.5 kilograms. Velocity is 11.3 meters per second and momentum it's asking what momentum is so that is an unknown variable that is our target <clears throat> all right so step number two we're going to write out our useful equations all right so um, when we're talking about useful equations we're going to get Right now, we only have one equation, and that is P equals M times V. Um, but it's, we're going to get more equations very soon, um, and it's going to get more complicated. So I know this step seems meaningless now, but being able to compare, okay, here's my list where I have M, V, and P, <clears throat> and over here I have an equation that fits that, that fits the list of variables I'm given, so that means that's the equation I should use. <clears throat> so that's why we do this step. And you'll see why that's so important in the next video. All right, so step number three. After we have listed all of our variables, listed our equations, and decided which equation to use, it is time to plug in the numbers and solve. Okay, so P. We can see that there is no value for P. Um, it is unknown, so it cannot change into anything. Mass is 38.5 kilograms. And we're going to multiply that by velocity, which is 11.3 meters per second. Okay. So my next step, I always like to... Hello. Okay, apparently I can't write in blue. My next step, I always like to deal with the units first. So I'm just going to look at these before I look at the numbers. You treat these basically like numbers. Okay. When you multiply them, that's all you're doing. Um, if we ignored the numbers, the problem would look like this. Okay. And that is perfectly fine, because if you guys remember, the units for momentum is, the standard ones at least, is kilograms times meters per second. So that works out, um, because what this is saying is we are on the right track. The way we set up our equation is going to give us the right answer, and you can tell because the units work out. Um, so that's why it's important to look at units. And yeah, so now we just do the regular math, just multiply these two numbers to get 
<coughs> together, and you get 38.5 times 11.3, 40, 435.05 kilograms times meters per second. Pretty easy. Okay, number two. So I'm going to read through this. A car that is 1,350 kilograms is traveling at 6,821 kilometers meters per second of momentum. How fast is the car moving? Okay. So number one, list our variables. The first thing here is mass, which is 1,350 kilograms. Then it gives us momentum, little p, which is equal to 6,821 kilograms meters per second. How fast is it going? That is velocity, and that is unknown. That's what the question is asking about. Okay, so step two. Write your equation, P equals M times B, easy enough. And step number three, um, plug in your numbers and solve. Alright, so P is 6,821 kilograms meters per second is equal to M, which is 1,350 kilograms, times velocity. Okay. So we need to get velocity by itself. Velocity is being multiplied by 1,350. To get velocity by itself, we need to get rid of this. So how do we do that? Well, we can see that it's being multiplied. So what we need to do is the opposite function. The opposite of multiplication is division. So we'll draw a fraction bar on both sides of the equation and divide both sides of the equation by 1,350 kilograms. 1,350 kilograms. Okay. <clears throat> so what that does effectively, on this side with the V, um, the kilogram, there's kilograms on top and bottom, so those cancel. 1,350 divided by 1,350 is 1, which effectively just cancels this out, um, because 1 times V would just be V. All right, And then over on this side, we have kilograms on top and kilograms on bottom. Those will cancel each other out leaving us with meters per second. So those just get copied and pasted into the final answer. Along with this V, because nothing happens to it, so it just gets copied and pasted down. And by the way, this is a good place to note we are on the right track because our units work out. We end up with meters per second, which is the unit for velocity. Okay, now we just need to do the regular math 6,821 divided by 1,350 is equal to, plug that into your calculator, you get 5.05 .05 meters per second. Nice. Number three. Okay, so which has more momentum? A penny that weighs 0, 0.025 kilograms, traveling at 11.5 meters per second, or a walrus that has 1,500 kilograms, traveling at 0, 0.025 meters per second. All right. So this is a little bit more complex. We have a penny 
and a walrus. And we need to compare their momentums. So PW, which is momentum of walrus, is unknown. P, P <laughs> is the momentum of the penny is unknown. That is kind of funny. I didn't even think, it, think of that when I wrote this question. That's awesome. Um, anywho, so uh, let's look at the penny first. So this will be the penny side of the, of the problem. The mass of the penny is 0 0.00 to five kilograms and the velocity of the penny is 11.5 meters per second okay a walrus change colors the mass of the walrus is 1500 kilograms and the velocity of the walrus is 0 0.025 Nice. Okay. Well, let's figure this out. Okay. So, um, I'm writing in red right now, so I'll just do this side. So, our equation, the useful equation is P, little p, equals M times V. And that is the same for both. Okay. Um, so now we just need to plug in our numbers into our equation. So little p, the momentum of the penny, the pp, is equal to um, the mass of the penny, which is 0 0.0025 kilograms times the velocity, which is 11.5 meters per second. Okay. So if we type this into our calculator, we get the PP is equal to 0 0.0025 times 11.5. Um, the units, kilograms, meters per second, kilograms, meters per second. Okay, that checks out. Times those numbers, that gives you 0 0.029. <clears throat> All right, um, now let's do the walrus side. So let's take these numbers and plug them into this one. So the momentum of walrus is equal to the mass of the walrus, 1,500 kilograms, times the velocity, 0 0.025. <clears throat> That's not right meters per second. Okay. So, um, again, the units, they work out. They're going to give us the momentum of the walrus is equal to some number in kilograms meters per second, which is great because that's those are the proper units. So that means we're on the right track. Now let's plug that into our calculator. 1500 times 0 0.025 is equal to 37.5 kilograms meters per second. So if we compare these two numbers, the PW is greater than the PP. Okay, so the walrus. has more momentum. Nice. All right. All right. Um, so here's the last question on the examples. Um, I've done this a couple times just because I was trying to find an easy way to explain this. The simplest way to explain this really um, because there's so many different ways to answer this question. Some are very complex and some are easy. You don't have to make this problem hard 
it is a little confusing. I don't think I'm going to put anything like this on a test or a quiz just because it's, it doesn't really serve the goals that I set out to accomplish. Um, I think if you're able to answer this type of question, that shows that you have gone beyond the goals that I expected. You, you're, you're doing better than um, you're doing really well in my class if you can answer this type of question. But if you can't, don't worry about it. Um, this is, this is kind of conceptually heavy, right? This is a little difficult. Um, conceptually, mathematically, it's really easy. You just have to know, understand how to work a problem like this. Okay, so here's the situation. Um, we have two balls. Ball A is slow, but big. Ball B is little, but fast. Okay. And the question is asking what which one has more momentum? Okay, so I know that we are looking for problem or momentum A and momentum B. So we know that the equation for both of these is going to end up being some form of m times v. Okay, we know that the mass of A is four times bigger, four times bigger than, did I say that right? The mass of A is four times bigger than B. So I'm going to put a four beside the M that goes with A because whatever, we don't know what the mass is, but whatever it is, it is four times bigger than this one. Okay. So these are the same variable. So anything that I put in this number has to go in this number. So if I were to put one here, I would have to put one there. Okay. Um, additionally, it says that ball B is four times faster than A. So go down to B, go to that velocity, put a four there. So no matter the, again, these are the same variables. So no matter what number I put here, I had to put here as well. So if I were to change this velocity to 612 meters per second, I would have to change this one to 612 meters per second and then multiply it by four, okay? It's a proportion. It doesn't matter what the number is. It's just about getting the proportions right, okay? But that's how you set this up. And then all you do is just simplify this. So you can rewrite this, um, get rid of this X and space in between. So the final momentum here is going to be 4MV. And the final momentum here is 4MV. Okay, that's not a definitive answer. That's kind of a conceptual answer. And you would say that um, momentum A is equal to momentum B. And there you go. That's how you answer that question.